A very pleasant good morning to you. I was thinking of an old song we used to sing years ago that said, Tempted and tried. Talked about we're all made to wonder. If we can be discouraged. Tempted and tried. I thought so much about that scripture the Lord has been laying on my heart today that we would minister. So we hope that you are prepared. I see I'm running a little bit behind times, but I didn't want to have all of this stuff out here. You know, I wanted to have the dishes all done up and looks better. But I do need to get to kneading this bread, and then we'll go into our devotion, Do Not Throw Away the Bread. And we're going to talk about a time when Jesus went through a temptation. He knows what it is to be tempted. Let's get our timing started. It'll be 10 minutes now. I was reading in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. You read this scripture now when Satan was going to tempt Jesus. You stop and think about this. Jesus was on earth as a man, and he had to experience exactly what we did. So he would know what we went through. It be, you know, wasn't enough for him to say, well, I'm the son of God, and I just know everything. He went through it just like we did. So he went through a temptation. So that's the background here for this scripture. After Jesus, well, pardon me, let's go to Matthew 4 and 4, get the right place here. But he... Jesus answered and said, he was talking to the Satan who was tempting him, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Satan was tempting him and telling him, you know, if you'll just, you know, you're really hungry, you've been fasting 40 days. You know, Satan knew that. That's the way he is. He comes at a weak point or something when you really was, he knew he was suffering hunger. After 40 day fast, they say that your body begins to actually feed on itself as if you don't eat. So he knew he was hungry, and so he said to him, you know what? He said, cast these breads into stone. And he said, you know, then if you'll just do that, see, so take care of your hunger problem, you know. And so, you can do it. Yeah, just do it. He, he wanted him to do something other than trust God, to be the person he was supposed to be, fulfill the will of God. He wanted him to use a substitute. He wanted him to show off. He wanted him to listen to what he said. That's what he was after. You, you just do this, and if he could get him to do one thing, what would he do? Sometimes people will say, well, I've already, I've already fouled up. I've already sinned, so I'll just go do something else. If he could have just gotten him to have departed from the purpose that he had come. Jesus knew that he was born to die. He knew he was coming as our Redeemer. And Satan didn't want him to fulfill the will of God. He was trying to get him to turn away. Don't do what God said. You don't have to do that. He was saying to him, if you will just, if you will just this, he started naming one thing after another. No, and Jesus didn't argue and fuss with him. Instead, what he said, thus saith the Lord. And he would quote scripture to him. He would tell him what God said. He said, I mean, he didn't. Satan, uh, Jesus didn't give Satan a chance at all. He just, everything he answered that he was going to please God. Satan was offering him a substitute. If you'll just do this. Oh, he said, I'll, I'll give you all of these things. Oh, so much he was offering him. But you know, Satan is a liar. It's, so whatever he says, the thing of it is, he can't do a lot of things he says he's going to, and he wouldn't if he could, because he's a liar. He's a deceiver. But Jesus, he lived victoriously, and he was showing us that even in an hour of, your, of real temptation, something like Jesus' case, he was really hungry. Yes, he was. He could have dwelt on that. I really am hungry. Well, if I just, I can just do this. You know, I'm the son of God. I have the power to do this. I, I, I can turn nice. But he didn't start thinking like that. Immediately, he went to the word of God substitutes are not the answer. We want the real thing. And Jesus told us already, and we had this in one of our previous lessons, that he said, I am the bread of life. Yes, he is the bread of life. I want the real bread. There's substitutes out there, and we even have people saying, and then talking about it as far as our physical food, we really don't need bread, and you should need it. It's not good for you, and all. But I don't really listen to that stuff because I look in the Bible and I see where, you know, Jesus fed the multitude with, with the loaves 
of bread and fishes. Then people tell me, oh, well, but yeah, that was better bread because it was over there. It didn't have all the stuff we've got in ours. Well, the way I look at that, Jesus knew where we were going to live when the Bible was written. He knows all about the countries. He knows we all can't live there in, in the Bible lands. So I'm not worried about that. But in the natural, yes, bread is okay. We eat it in, in you know, proper amounts. And we don't want junk bread. I understand that. But there are people that have no appetite for the things of God. They are listening to the devil and things he's telling them that if you will just... You don't have to do that, the things that the Lord is dealing with them to do and encouraging them. God wants to use us to work in his kingdom. He wants us to be workers together with him. And what a privilege, what an honor that we can be workers together with him. And Satan's trying to dissuade us because you know what? God has a purpose for each of our lives. I mean that sincerely. He does. He's got a plan for our life individually and Satan doesn't want you to do that. He wants to be able to brag and talk about how that this person has failed. And he's convinced them to fail and all. He wants to do that. But may we never give in to that. But if we do, I want you to remember this. The scripture tells us that God will in, Jesus will in no wise cast you out when you come to him repenting and you acknowledge, I've done wrong. I gave in to what Satan said. But I don't want to live like that. I want to please you, Lord. He doesn't turn you away. He clearly says, I will in no wise cast you out. So he's saying, come on back and let me help you. I am the true bread. And that person will say, I've had my fill of the substitute. I don't want the substitute. And Jesus, I want to work for you. I want to work for you. Yes, you will have missed the time that you could have worked for him and you were listening, taking a substitute from the devil. But God will help and guide, help you get back on track and you still can work for him. Jesus is the bread of life. And remember he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word from that proceeds from the mouth of God. We don't just want a little bit of what the Lord said. I like this and I'll do this. I don't like that part. I don't want to do that. But it's all of it. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. That is life even now and then for eternity. But to have the real, as they, it's not stuff, but just to use a, a common saying, we say, now that's good stuff. Well, it's, I mean, this is the real thing. It really is the real thing, and it blesses and keeps. The thing about those substitutes, if you substitute a life, you don't live for Jesus, that won't pay on Judgment Day. But if we love the Lord and we serve Him, we're faithful to Him, we honor Him, and we eat this bread of life every day, and we cherish every word from Him. We read His word, not just we heard somebody say the Bible said this or say that, but we get into his word ourselves, and we read and we pray. And we ask the Lord to open our understanding. And I can assure you from personal experience, I know he does. He answers. There's a scripture you don't understand. And you searched and you still don't understand it. You can pray and the Lord can help you. And there are others that have studied and know and maybe in depth on that subject. And God will make sure that you know about it. I want to say this, how important it is that you talk about Jesus. You talk about messages that you've heard that blessed you. That you talk about scriptures that you've read and the Lord gave you something that encouraged you and helped you. It really lifts you up and helps you then. We don't want to just talk about the Lord when we're at church. I was thinking just today while I was studying on this message and even as throughout the days if I've been studying for it, I begin to think about the times that people have, have called me and we've talked they've, we've talked about this, a message they've heard at their church or they've heard a testimony somewhere and it just uplifts you to hear that. That's what we need to be talking about, not gossiping and talking old rotten stuff. Those substitutes are rotten and filthy. They won't help us and Satan will point you to somebody that, well, they're just hypocrites. There may be hypocrites out there, but if there's a hypocrite, there's a real deal somewhere. 
you know what? We may not be, we can't say, I've never made a mistake in my life. But we can say, I'm following the Lord, and I'm asking Him to help me and guide me and help me to be like Him. I love the Lord, and I'm walking with Him, and I want you to join in. We can do that, and we will walk together, but be sure that we talk about the things of God. Just last night, a friend of mine called me, and she had been to a series of meetings and was telling me how refreshing it was. She said, I don't know how long it had been since I had heard such wonderful preaching and she said in the worship and she said it was just so anointed she told me some of the things that the preachers had said i was so uplifted and i thought you know this is it let's talk about jesus and his goodness mm, it tastes good there's nothing like talking about jesus looks like my 10 minutes is up here so let's turn this off and now Let's turn to a couple of important announcements, okay? Now let me get this all ready and get this all padded down, looking pretty. Oh, oh, it's bouncing back just like we like. Uh, that stretch is good, so I'm happy with this. Okay, I've got a nice clean pan here. And let's get this on here. We have been hearing and people have been telling me they would like to learn how to make sourdough bread like I make and they would like to have some training sessions. So guess what? We have one scheduled and it is for Saturday, July 18th, 10.30 to noon. And after we get finished, we're going to go out to eat somewhere. Now it's not going to be any place really fancy going to cost you an arm and a leg and you don't have the money to, to do it. So don't worry about that. Everything's going to be fine. So we look forward to you being able to be there if at all possible. So we hope you will make your plans and if you will go to the Elgin First Assembly of God site, the Facebook site. I do have it on there it's, it, as an event. You can see that if you're interested in going, you can click on interested. And if you know you're planning on going, you can go ahead and click on that too. But we certainly look forward to having you there if you can come. If you can't come, tell others about it. Another thing I need to talk about that's really important is that I found out that the word sour, sourdough, has turned some people off because they think the bread tastes horrible. They don't want anything sour. Well, I'm a person that literally does not want sour, bre sour, sour bread that would taste sour. But I, I can tell you from what I've read, there are different types of sourdough. You can get some that taste a lot like vinegar, and I certainly wouldn't want that kind. Now, the sourdough that I have, the lady, the starter that she gave me, it is very sweet. It tastes very good. There's no sour to it. And I would appreciate it if those of you who have eaten my bread would be so kind as to write a comment, go into the comment section of this video and tell people, you know, verify, not that they think I'm a liar, but I want you to substantiate this and say you have tasted and know. You know, taste and see. Well, you taste and you know, and you can tell people, please, that when we say sourdough, don't get the wrong idea. Then I know other people, when I mention the mention of sourdough is, oh, I love sourdough. So maybe they've got a hold of one like mine, or maybe they have a one that tastes like vinegar. They tell me you can go all the different from real from sweet like mine, clear up to all different levels of the vinegar. Like I said, mine does not taste like that. So just know that that that's that's what I make is good sourdough rolls. Now, if you're interested, we want you to be sure and come. I hope I have covered everything. Thing. I've explained about sourdough and I've told the date, so we'll tell that again, July 18th, that's a Saturday, 10.30 to noontime. And it doesn't matter if it's men or women, we don't care the age groups, you are welcome to come. That's all I can think of at this time and I've got to clean up my mess here. Oh, one more thing I forgot to tell you. I don't want to take a lot of your time. But we have a new puppy, and my hands are such shape, I can't go get this new puppy. But if you will go 
to my personal page, Karen Clymer, you will see a picture of Wenzel Cub. He is an adorable little pug. We love him to pieces. And he was a wonderful baby. He only whimpered a couple of times last night. He did great. I'm so proud and happy of this little baby. And we will get to show him off at some point in time. In fact, I'll probably do a Facebook Live with him. But we are happy to have you here today as Silver Citizen Believers Brigade. We certainly are soldiers marching in the army of the Lord. I need God, and I want him to use me, and he does want to use me, but the only way he can use me if I allow him to need me. You know, needing is monotonous sometimes, like I need bread takes 10 minutes to knead it. But it's monotonous. I'm used to doing it, so I don't think about it. But you know when we're doing something for the Lord or God is preparing us for something, it may take literally years. We don't know that. God doesn't tell us in the beginning, now this is going to happen, start here, and it's going to finish on this day. You know, he doesn't talk to us like that. And he has to need us. And it seems like, I'm not getting anywhere. It's monotonous. It's just monotonous. It's not. He's accomplishing something. He's blending all of the ingredients together. There's various factions and things in our life, all kinds of situations that come that are brought to bear, and God is moving and watching and I heard a beautiful song the other day, and I loved it. It was talking about from the prayer to the answer. The time between the prayer. What's happening between the prayer and the answer? Wonderful. It said God is building bridges. And God was, he was just all kinds of things that he was doing. Tearing down walls. Relationships. It was just a tremendous song. So if you get a chance to listen to that, it was by the Lefebvre's. So that's what God is doing. He's working and building. All if we get it, when we get everything together, and as we waited upon Him and let Him need us, and He's flipped us over and around, and He's with His wonderful loving hands, He's needed us. And so then He finds we're strong. I tell you, the more I need that bread, first it's really, really easy. It gets harder because it's getting stronger. And that's what the Lord is doing with us. He wants us to be strong. So we can do a work for him. Any situation that comes, he wants us to be strong. We can rise to any one of those occasions. And then when the Lord calls on us, we say, yes, Lord, I am prepared. You want to be prepared? You got to get up on this board like this. And I've got my little Tupperware thing here. You got to get up on this cabinet. It's hard. It's not a nice, soft place. But I'll tell you what, it makes good bread. You be blessed, and we will see you next Friday morning. Goodbye.